Movie Sensation. I'm your host, Dan. And today we'll be taking a look at the book, Bad Movie Bible. So just a quick note. Um, you know, there is a lot of material on YouTube about movies so bad they're good, um, including a, a channel called Just That, So Bad They're Good. Um, and there's a lot of debate about how good it is for films to have the idea of a bad movie, um, you know, ridiculing these small budget films that uh, where people try their best and uh, they obviously have entertainment value and so why call them bad? Um, in this case, these many of these movies are just movies I enjoy. I don't care if other people want to call them bad. It doesn't, doesn't affect me whatsoever. And, you know, I'm not sure that I buy the argument that it's doing these films a disservice. Um, uh, I like these, most of these films. And this is a good look. This is a good overview that you could give to someone who's just getting into, who suddenly realizes, you know, I'm sick of big blockbuster movies. I'm sick of reality TV. These quirky kind of films, I'd like to see more of them. But I don't want to wade through a ton of bad sci-fi channel movies or what what have you um so these are uh this is this is a good book uh rob hill uh the writer of this book um you know i don't think many people who like these low budget films would disagree with most of his choices uh i'm going to flip through this kind of quick and uh you know not talk about it very long you'll you'll, you'll get the idea pretty quick i, I think this is um a good overview, like I said, well put together. Um, he does, um, you know, the the first chapter is, of course, what is a bad movie? What what makes a bad movie a good bad movie, etc. Um, you know, and you know, if you're into these films, you'll you'll probably recognize most of these. But uh, like I said, it's a good overview, and he's got this, um, you know, Ed Wood. Uh, so it, here, here it is kind of, uh, divided up into chapters. There's a, the first chapter's action. Now here's the, uh, here's his rating system. What's the cheese factor? How's the acting? What's the amount of excess ineptitude and general what the L factor? And, um, you know, I don't, I don't even bother ever looking at that. I don't, you know, it doesn't. You know, I don't know what the heck. And, you know, so it starts off with Jim Cotta, you know, famously. And this is, um, you know, uh, Miami Connection, of course, has become pretty popular thanks to uh, Cinema Draft House, uh, Arlington Cinema, Dra well, not Arlington, Austin Cinema and Draft House, uh, finding it and restoring it. And um, so it's a great, uh, uh, here he does an Andy Sidaris film, do or die. And he, he mentions in here, oh, you know, everyone mentions Hard Ticket to Hawaii, which is most people consider Andy Sidaris's masterpiece of these kind of B-movies, the babes with guns um, films. Uh, so he picked this one. It was one of his other ones, Ninja 3 Domination. So you get the idea. You either recognize these. If you don't recognize them, well, then maybe this is the book for you. I did want to point out Drunken Wu-Tang. Now, this is um, one... I saw this at one of the Chinese theaters in D.C. And it, and usually the, the, the prints I saw there um, were in uh, either... You know, the, the languages were either Cantonese, mostly, or Mandarin. But uh, they all mostly had subtitles. Uh, English, because... Um, you know, the, the Hong Kong companies were um, obligated to put the, the English language uh, subtitles on it, apparently. And also a um, simplified uh, Chinese that, that so different people with different dialects and languages could hopefully understand it, even if they didn't uh, speak, you know, Cantonese or, or what have you. Um, but, <laughs> so almost always they had English subtitles. Not always very accurate, but... Uh, I saw this movie and it was one of the rare prints that didn't have English subtitles and it is the 
it is so bizarre. It's it's just unbelievable. And it's a it's a comedy too. So it's you know, even though there's kung fu, there's a lot of comedy that I was just totally lost, but loved it. Um of course Wing Wing makes a a uh, an appearance. And these are all, you know, um really pretty some would say pretty obvious choices. So he writes a little bit about it. Um you know, he he gives a description of the the plot then he kind of talks about what it is that um the overall feeling of it like in this Death Wish 3 you know, he talks about the the sleaze factor and and how the people who made it felt um so, you know, it's it's got a little bit of uh, something besides just uh, reviews of it. There's Samurai Cop. It talks a little bit about the discovery of this and, you know, the, the, you know, the people who kind of pushed it out into the open. And uh, Fist of the Vampire. Now, this is one of the ones I... I've seen clips from this. I haven't seen this one. This is one of the few I haven't seen. But quite frankly, the clips I saw... <laughs> they, they don't make me feel like I really want to go see it. Deadly Prey, of course, the the Rambo ripoff that out Rambo's Rambo. Um, so um, yeah. Oh, and the, and the, the even uh, is, this is even new enough that it has who killed Captain Alex, the uh, the African action movie that's so cheaply made, um, and. Kind of got a little bit of a a name for itself. Um, oh, here's here's the other one I was looking for. The Alien Factor. Uh, Baltimore's own, the late, great Don Dohler. The Alien Factor was um, a movie that uh, Don did really well with, uh, thanks to a, a um, packaging, packaging deal. Uh, his movie got involved with, it, it became a, 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 a cable hit kind of thing um but you know this is a this is a great movie he basically remade it at least twice because galaxy invader um you know this this has a trio well really it's four aliens in the movie but there's there's different aliens in this movie they 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 crash on earth they go out and start causing mayhem and they have to be stopped then he made another movie called Galaxy Invader, in which there's only one alien who crash lands, kills a bunch of people, and has to be stopped. And then he made a movie called Night Beast, which is basically the R-rated version <laughs> of Galaxy Invader. And um, the the great thing is that all three pictures are are at once very similar, but at, they're also different enough that all three are great to watch. You could watch a triple feature of these, and even though it's the same plot, you would still love them all. Uh, really, one of my very favorite um, uh, B-movie directors. Um, so, uh, yeah, you should definitely check that out. Uh, so anyway, um, like I said, y you get the idea about whether or not you need this. Like, I, I wouldn't have done something like Battlefield Earth because it's, you know... It's so famous. Road War is one. I, I had never seen that until I saw uh, the Rift Tracks people do it. And, uh, of course, Rudy Ray Moore. Um, just uh, a lot of good stuff. There's the horror section. <laughs> um, so that's this book. Like I said, I think it's, uh, it's fun to read if you're familiar with the movies. Don't expect to discover, uh, if you're a longtime fan of these kind of movies, to find anything new, but it's a great uh, book to uh, pass along to someone who might not be that familiar with these things. And I'd like to mention that um, Rob Hill also has a uh, website, or, I mean a YouTube channel called The Bad Movie Bible. And this, is, it doesn't have that many um, videos but it is fantastic. Uh, it's like the best, worst, and weirdest Star Wars knockoffs, best, worst Vanity Projects, Terminator knockoffs, Nightmare on Elm Street knockoffs, Jazz Plantation, Jaws, 
exploitation, knockoffs, etc. Um, these are heavily edited overviews that just reel off just about every knockoff you can think of for these different, um, uh, you know, jaw exploitation films, Terminator. I mean, you know, it's they're just great. They're so heavily edited. They go by so fast. The clips he picks are great. What he talks about during the films is great. So I definitely urge you to check out his uh, YouTube channel. Like I said, Bad Movie Bible, and it's got these... Uh, got these great that are definitely worth watching and and you know i have seen things in there uh you know in those uh videos that i hadn't seen before so a lot of a lot of fun stuff and um so there you go thanks for watching